Did you know it was possible to flash a project to your ESP directly from your web browser? Here is an ESP32 connected to an RGB matrix panel and it currently doesn't have anything displayed on screen. But just by plugging it into my PC, visiting this web page and clicking flash, after a minute or so I have my Wi-Fi Tetris clock project running on it, which is kind of amazing. It's achieved by using the ESP web flash tools and in this video I'm going to talk about why I think this is incredibly useful, what projects it suits for and show you how to set it up. So let's start with why it's so useful. Quite simply, this is the easiest way to flash a project to your ESP, period. Some large ESP projects like Tasmoto and WLED are already making use of it. Other than the USB driver, the end user does not need to install any software on their machine, not even the Arduino IDE. The only prerequisite is that the browser supports the web serial standard, and for the moment that's limited to Chrome, Edge, and Opera. Simplifying the installation of a project this much is most beneficial for people who are not familiar with working with ESP boards. In a recent video, I showed how to install a PS4 jailbreak project to an ESP32 S2 using web flashing. And what's pretty cool is now the web flash method is being used by other people in the PS4 scene. There is a good chance that the people looking to set up that project have no interest in Arduinos or ESPs. They just want the project to work. So this is a really good method for them. I also recently used this method for sharing the changes I was making to the scrolling LED matrix project with the Smarter Everyday team, and it was great. All they had to do was go to the website and click install, and they had their new version. But even for more experienced users, it can be a lot easier as well. Like I said earlier, Tasmoto and WLED use WebFlash too, and if I was installing either of these, I would definitely use the WebFlash. Sure, I could go through the steps of getting the code and installing all the dependent libraries, but why would I? The only good reason I can think of is if you want to make changes to the code. Speaking of changing code, that leads me nicely to the next topic of what projects does it suit. The WebFlash tool installs binaries to the board, which are compiled versions of code, and it means users can't change the code at all. Previously, when sharing my projects, a common step I have asked people to do is update the code with their Wi-Fi details or API keys, and that just isn't possible. Even something simple like the pin an LED strip is connected to now needs to be configured some other way. One of the more common ways people get around this problem is by using something like a Wi-Fi manager, which I covered in a recent video. The flow then becomes the user flashes a generic version of the project to the board and on first boot Wi-Fi manager will detect there are no configurations and launch the config portal. The user then enters their details like their Wi-Fi credentials and API keys and then the project is set up. Check out the Wi-Fi manager video for more details around this. I have been thinking that this configuration step could be made simpler through the web page though. From a user experience point of view, a web page with a keyboard is probably as simple and flexible as it gets, and the user already has the project plugged into the USB from the flashing, so I definitely think there's something there. I built this simple example that makes use of the built-in serial monitor with the web flash tools that prompts the user for their Wi-Fi credentials, and this works fine. It's a lot quicker than entering your details using Wi-Fi Manager, but I think it could be improved even more. There is no reason why these inputs couldn't be part of a web page, or maybe even be more interactive. You could even provide a guided experience for the user to set up their device. I'll also mention here that there is another solution called Improv that initially used Bluetooth from the browser to provide the configuration, but now there is a USB version. It does seem a little bit complicated for what it is, but in truth I haven't really looked into it at all, so I can't provide any opinions or advice on it. If you have used it, please share in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. 
Another thing that is possible is if you have a project with a feature that should be either on or off, or maybe has limited options, what it could be, say for example, what size display is being used, it is possible to upload multiple binaries and provide a menu for the user to decide which version of the binary is flashed. This works okay, but if you have multiple options, this gets out of hand very quickly as you would need to upload binaries for every combination of the different options, which isn't much fun. Next, let's take a look at what's involved in setting up a project for web flashing. The web flash tools makes use of the web serial API, which as mentioned earlier, has limited browser support, basically just Chrome, Edge or Opera. The web serial API also requires the web page to be HTTPS. For this demo, I'm going to use GitHub Pages to host the site. GitHub Pages is a feature of GitHub that allows you to create a static website for your project. It's free, supports HTTPS, and is quite easy to set up. This isn't a full guide for GitHub Pages or anything, and you can host this page wherever you want. But this is just a quick way to get set up to demonstrate the web flashing. To set it up, you just need to do the following. Click settings on the repo you want to add the website to and select the pages section. Under source, change the drop down to your main branch. And finally, click the enforce HTTPS option. And that's it. When you visit your username.github.io forward slash repo name, you should see your project's readme converted to a web page. Next, we need to create the flashing web page and configure what gets flashed. I've uploaded an example project that is linked in the description that you can use as a base, and I'll just go over that project now. In the root of the GitHub repo, I have a file called flash.html. This is a very simple web page that basically just contains the web flash button. It will also display an error message if the user's browser does not support the web serial API. Next, you'll see I have a web flash folder. This could be called anything. Just make sure to update the manifest location on flash.html if you do change it. Speaking of manifest, you'll see I have a manifest.json file in that folder. This is the configuration the web flash tools use. You should update the name field for your project. It's not overly important, but it is the name that shows up to the user when they are flashing. There is also the option new install prompt arrays, and this is probably something you want to leave as true. It will prompt the user about erasing their flash and give them the option of not doing it. By default, the web flash tools will erase the entire flash of the ESP, which also includes things like the user's Wi-Fi credentials, which I don't usually want to get deleted. If the user's ESP has the credentials already, why go through the steps of inputting them again? This is something that got implemented in a more recent version of the web flash tools, and to be honest, I would prefer an option that just didn't prompt the user at all. I just think it would be one less thing the user has to worry about or that needs to be explained to them. I do believe if you have improv set up, if you're just updating a project rather than flashing a new one, it won't erase the flash, but as mentioned, I haven't used improv at all. It's also possible to downgrade the web flash tools on the flash.html page to get a version that doesn't erase the flash. I previously used 3.4.2 and it worked okay, but you're losing the advantages of any other improvements they've made since that version. You can also see it supports different types of ESP devices. It will automatically select the appropriate binaries based on the device that is plugged in. At the time of making this video, the supported devices are ESP8266, ESP32, and then ESP32, C3, S2, and S3. The hardest part for me when first using the web flash tools was finding out where to get the binaries, because I was completely unfamiliar with what happened once you clicked upload. If you're using the Arduino IDE, you can do the following. Click File and then Preferences, and then under Show Verbose Output, check the Upload option. Now you can program the board with the project you want to create the web flash page for. 
In the output, scroll up to the top and there should be a line with ESP tool. Copy this entire line into a new text document. To get this same info from platform IO, run the following line in the terminal and you'll see the same ESP tool line there. Next, we are going to extract the binary addresses that were passed into ESP tool. In this example for the ESP32, there are four bin files written. There will also be a hex number before each address and this number is the offset. The manifest file expects the offset to be in decimal, so you will need to convert that hex to decimal. I just use this online tool. Copy each of the bin files from the previous step to the web flash folder we created earlier. It should be beside the manifest.json. Add an entry in the parts section for each of the bin files. Use the file name as the path and the decimal offset for the offset. You can now commit your changes and push to your repo. Just to note, there is an argument that it's not good practice to add binaries into source control like this, but it doesn't seem like it's possible to get the binaries from the releases section where you would normally put them. This is due to something called cores. Basically, the releases file are on a different URL than your GitHub pages, so your browser will block them from being accessed. If you're worried about polluting your repo with binaries, you could always just create a new repo specifically for the web flash. You are now ready to test it. Just visit username.github.io forward slash repo name forward slash flash.html. Click the install button and follow the steps. Just to note, it takes maybe 30 seconds to a minute for the GitHub pages to update after pushing, so it might be worth putting a version number in the web page or something to verify it's the latest version. One method for getting binaries that I haven't actually tried yet but I think should work fine is I recently saw this video from Kevin Dara where he was cloning an ESP32 onto a new one. So what he did was he basically read the flash from one ESP32 and then wrote that flash file to a new one. And you could do the steps of just reading the flash and then hosting that binary file up on the web flash server. Just one thing to be careful about is if you read the entire flash, it will contain your Wi-Fi details. So you might want to offset the read part to uh, 100, I think it should be. Hopefully you found this video useful and I've covered everything you need to know about the web flash tools. If there was something I didn't or you have some other suggestions, please do share them with us in the comments or even better, feel free to join my Discord channel where you'll find a bunch of other like-minded makers to discuss with. And as always, huge thanks to my GitHub sponsors for helping to support the channel. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you next time. Salam.